After watching this video, you should have a basic understanding of how Avogadro's law relates to thinking about a problem concerning a sample of atmospheric air and how, for example, we can ask what the mass is of one component of a mixture of atmospheric air. If I have these two tanks, each containing a gas, and it turns out that the two containers have the same temperature, they have the same volume, and they measure the exact same pressures, but the two gases are different, I can assume under these conditions that when the temperature, volume, and pressure conditions are the same, that the number of gas particles in each container are equal to each other. In other words, I can also assume that the number of moles of gas in each container are equal to each other. This is called Avogadro's law. And by the way, this is how we deduce the relative mass of two particles when we went through this exercise in class. One important thing that emerges out of Avogadro's law that we can state is if we have a mixture of two gases, for example, this is, uh, let's say this is representing nitrogen and this is representing oxygen, and we say, for example, that in this mixture, we have 70% by volume. That means 70% of the volume is made up of the nitrogen gas. And we have, therefore, 30% of the volume is made up of oxygen gas here. We can also say that these percentage by volumes are equal to the percent by mole values of each of the gas. What that really says is that if we know the total number of particles, for example, and it's 70% by volume nitrogen, that also means it's 70% of the total particles are nitrogen particles or nitrogen molecules and 30% oxygen molecules. So the percent by volume can be assumed to also be the percent by mole. That's Avogadro's hypothesis. Okay, let's look at the problem that we did as a let's think activity in class. We said that imagine we have a sample of atmospheric air where we have 78.1% by volume of that air being made, it, made up of nitrogen and 20.9% by volume of it being oxygen. I also said at standard temperature, which is always 273.15 Kelvin, and standard pressure, which is one atmosphere, those are the STP conditions, that the density of the air was 1.292 grams per liter. And based on this composition, the average molar mass, or the molar mass of the air, was 28.97 grams per mole. That means one mole of this air mixture weighs 28.97 grams. The question I posed was, what was the mass of nitrogen in one liter of this air. And so to work this out, the first thing we're going to do is take advantage of Avogadro's hypothesis. And I want to draw two boxes here, illustrate this. We know that, for example, if this air is 20.9% by volume oxygen and 78.1% by volume nitrogen, that Avogadro's hypothesis states that that also means those are the percent by mole values, which essentially is stating that we have 20.9% molar amount of oxygen and 78.1% molar amount of nitrogen, something like that in terms of proportion of for this microscopic representation. Okay, let's work through the math now. If I have one liter of air, I can figure out the mass of that air by multiplying it by the density of air under the conditions I stated. In doing so, I'm saying that one liter of air multiplied times its density will cancel out the volume units and leave me with the mass of that sample of air. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue this calculation in one shot here. I'm then going to say if I have that mass of air, I can use the molar mass of that air, which is 28.97 grams per mole. 
set up an equation to cancel out the mass units. And thus what I've done is converted the volume of air to the moles of air that make up that volume. And in this case, I get 4.460 times 10 to the minus second moles of air. Okay, now I'm going to take this value and using Avogadro's hypothesis, I can state that 4.460 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of air times the percent by volume, which is also the percent by moles of nitrogen, will tell me how many moles of nitrogen I have in that total mole value of air. In this case, I get 3.48 times 10 to the minus second moles of nitrogen. Now what I can do is I can take that moles of nitrogen and convert that to mass of nitrogen by multiplying that value by the molar mass of N2. And I get the molar mass of N2, of course, by adding up the relative atomic mass of two nitrogen atoms, each being 14.01. So I would get 28.02 grams in one mole of N2. This converts that mole value of N2 to mass of N2 and I get as my answer 0.976 grams of N2 in a one liter sample of air under the composition conditions I gave in the problem.